welcome, welcome, welcome to the Zen square quotes intentional of Python exemplars. I am Paige Cruz from Chronosphere, really delighted to be here in community today. For the next 15 minutes, this is our agenda. We'll cover the Zen of Python for the uninitiated, exemplars explained, example exemplars, and exemplar enlightenment. So let's go. For those of you who are not yet Pythonistas, there is a little thing called the Zen of Python. Um, and what the OTEP is for open telemetry, the PEP is for Python. It stands for Python Enhancement Proposal, and there are beautiful little design documents that talk about changes to developing the language Python and um, guiding principles. If you type in python-c, quote, import this, there's a little Easter egg and it will pop up. This is the 19 sort of guiding principles of Python language development, and I've bolded a couple of my favorites. Simple is better than complex, complex is better than complicated, and readability counts. Now, nestled in there is probably my most favorite, which is there should be one and preferably only one obvious way to do it, whatever it is. In our case today is adding exemplars. But what is a little bit sad for us Pythonistas is in the world of open source observability, there's often not one, but two, but three, but four different ways to do something depending on your ecosystem and what you have set up. So now that we know about the Zen of Python, let's talk about why Zen is in scare quotes. Um, think about getting paged for an issue. Um, most of us would get from our paging tool into the graph of the monitor um, with metrics that power that alert. And you kind of validate and say, okay, yep, the error rate is high, knew that, uncomfortably high, enough that you paged me, but now where do I go? What am I supposed to do? Enter exemplars. They are these beautiful little diamonds, each of which represents a, a distributed trace or a request within that same context of that service operation in time window. They're beautiful, they invite you to click, they say what is behind there, why, why is the error rate high? And I wanna note that exemplars aren't the answer. A lot of times observability vendors market their products as if simply by the virtue of logging in, you'll be slapped on the face with an answer and get back to your day job. And we all in this room know that that is not true. So I don't want to tell you that exemplars are a silver bullet. I do want to tell you when they're great and when they're less great. So, tracing is probably one of my favorite telemetry types. I think why we don't hear about exemplars more is because the folks who brought in tracing are typically observability nerds. They were the ones who stood up the instrumentation, stood up the tracing pipeline. They didn't really need to have that one hop. It wasn't that much of a cognitive load for them to say, hmm, given this metric chart for this service and this operation, I know how to go query my traces. It's a little laborious, a little toilsome, but not the end of the world. The people I think that benefit the most from exemplars are the newbies or folks who are resistant or skeptical to tracing and they're the ones who are not gonna be advocating um, to add exemplars in. So, I'll talk about both OpenTelemetry and Prometheus here, starting, of course, with OpenTelemetry, because where are we but Hotel Community Day. So the metrics data spec defines an exemplar as a recorded value that associates Hotel context to a metric event within a metric, which is kind of a bit of a mouthful, a little bit confusing. And when we peel back that layer, the actual technical definition is an exemplar includes a value, a timestamp in Unix epoch nanoseconds, which was new to me, a filtered attribute, and then of course an optional trace ID or span ID. And the good news is across the board, no matter what type of open telemetry metric you are going to instrument, exemplars were, are supported and were kind of built in from the spec at the get go. Good job. The less great news is if you are a Pythonista and ready after this presentation to go add exemplars to your hotel metrics, you kind of can't do that yet. We're looking at the spec compatibility matrix, which you can find in GitHub, and you can see Python has helpfully said we do not support any of those. 
the blank boxes are the unknown status those um, SIGs or language groups haven't reported in. So props to Python for following instructions, but also there is an open issue that any one of you today, tomorrow, this week could come and contribute. The Python SIG meets Thursdays at 9 a.m. PT, and I would love to help you get connected. So is that the end of the story for OTEL and exemplars? Of course not, because exemplars are traces attached to metrics. And what else would you be instrumenting for traces other than OTEL? So OTEL's not going away, but OTEL metrics will shift our focus to Prometheus metrics. Now, open metrics spec defines exemplars slightly differently as a reference to a data outside of the metric set. Common use case, again, for program IDs of program traces. What is open metrics? Why does it matter for Prometheus? Well, open metrics is intended as a neutral metric spec, not tied to Prometheus, however Prometheus intends to implement it, but it was meant to be kind of a neutral cloud native metrics um, standard specification others could implement. When we unpeel the layer of what's going on here, we've got a value, we've got a label set, which again, filtered attributes, and the timestamp this time is in Unix epoch seconds. So while on the face of it, exemplars kind of sound the same, right? A trace attached to a trace information attached to a metric, they're not necessarily, once you dig into the details, a one-to-one -one match. When it comes to Prometheus, only counters and histograms support exemplars, not gauges, not summaries, and obviously um, not info. So you can start to see the differences here. So for our example today, we're gonna take the best of both worlds. We're gonna keep our tracing for OTEL. We're gonna send that on to Jaeger for storage and biz. We're gonna keep prom instrumentation for metrics and send that to Prometheus also for storage and biz because this is all just gonna run local. So the actual act of instrumenting to add the exemplar is pretty straightforward other than you've gotta make sure you've got a zero padded hexadecimal string for the, um, the trace ID, but it is as simple as adding the trace ID and optional data like maybe a trace URL if your tracing lives in a different tool, um, and then kind of going about your business. And you can see it's just a very simple dictionary, nothing magic. Um, it is literally as simple as just throwing in that trace ID there. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure you flip on the feature flag for exemplar storage and prom. While exemplars as a concept have been around for a long time, the actual implementation of them is still relatively fresh and so um, it's behind a feature flag. So if you want to get started, flip on the feature flag and then update your instrumentation and boom, <coughs> you'll see something like this. We've got our metrics and then we've got these beautiful little diamonds that are just calling to us what is happening. I see it's going up. What is happening from the beginning to the end? I want to know. It's maybe our inner child that just wants to click on things that look interesting and exemplars invite that um, interactivity. Hovering will show a kind of quick stats about what's going on, the trace ID, the trace URL, and some associated labels. Clicking opens up this little panel and it's a little bit easier to copy and paste that trace URL. Now I said I wanted everything in one click. I don't think it's the end of the world to copy and paste that link into your browser to get to a beautiful, very short trace waterfall because this is Hello Exemplar, it's not real world production. Um, but think about the magic of that if you were not somebody intimately familiar with traces to say, hmm, I got alerted, this thing looks interesting. The metrics kind of depending on your cardinality and how you manage them at your company, you may be a little limited um, from what you can tell from the metrics. And so we always have to go to traces, have to go to logs. And for someone who's starting out to just click on a little diamond and get taken from something they know, metrics about their service, to traces about their service with that same context, time window, operation, context, it is a really good entry point to say, hmm, I wanna look at traces in aggregate. Hmm, what else is in the tracing? What other attributes do I have access to? Um, is a lot better of a start than simply throwing tracing at folks and expecting them to just kind of pick it up. Now, here's where things get a little interesting. Uh, I was, let's say, naive and ambitious when pitching this talk to think I will teach you every single way to attach exemplars to metrics whether you're translating OTEL to PROM, PROM to OTEL, et cetera. And as I peeled back the layers of complexity, um, I realized it was not gonna be possible to do that in 15 minutes. 
A few of the things that you'll want to keep in mind if you are in that situation are the current ongoing implementation of open metrics and prom. So open metrics or Prometheus does not support both text and protoboth exposition formats in open metrics yet. Um, the ongoing build out of open telemetry metrics within the Python SDK, which we kind of noticed all of those exemplars were a no, a no for now, not a no forever. Um, and then I think there's gonna be a talk later that talks about the cumulative delta, delta processor. So there's a lot of things you'll wanna keep in mind if you are doing that translation. Um, in addition to are we pulling or pushing these metrics? There's a lot of layers of complexity. And so my personal take is I like to use technologies at what they're best at today. And so today I think Otel for traces, of course, as soon as Otel metrics for Python get exemplars, that would be lovely. But if that's something you're interested in, just go with the prom metrics for today. Another note is your mileage may vary when it comes to cloud vendor managed Prometheus. I was a little surprised reading the docs that AWS managed Prometheus did not seem to support exemplars. I would love to talk to somebody at AWS about that. And Google managed Prometheus only accepts exemplars on histograms, not counters. So even if you look at just what Prometheus supports, you've got to look at what type of Prometheus you're running. Is it cloud vendor managed? Are you doing it all on bare metal? Um, there is just so much going on at once. And it left me with a lot of empathy for developers that are newer to Otel in this whole observability world that we're inviting in. So let's talk about when and where to use exemplars. I think the pros are that they are very discoverable in your common workflows. Um, we still pull up metric charts all the time. We're looking at dashboards. You get paged by metrics. And having that, those little diamonds that just say, what is happening? I want to see what happened after I got paged, before I got paged, and I want to compare those two traces. Exemplars give you a really quick way to grab two trace IDs from before and after and do those comparisons. Um, the third thing is that it is a bridge for potentially siloed telemetry. There's a lot of studies that or surveys that have been done that show orgs are running like five to 10 different observability platforms, which is wild. And these exemplars can be a bridge between your Jaeger instance or whatever vendor you're running and your metrics product. If the data lives in separate places, you may as well link it. It's only in your best interest to make that hop so easy from one to the other. And really, I still just think Exemplars have a great place for trace onboarding. It can be a real struggle for organizations adopting distributed tracing to break out beyond the like tracing evangelists, the, the nerds that really love tracing and use it all the time. Um, getting that wider adoption means putting it into common workflows where people already are today. That will be one of the most successful ways that you could introduce it. Um, yeah. yep, yep, yep. So if we think back to our example, why are, not, why are exemplars not this like magic button? Well, say we clicked on, on one of these exemplars and it said, okay, there was a timeout, API timeout error for an Android user. That gives us more information than the metric chart did for sure. It's a great entry point. But there's a lot more questions that come up. Is this across different versions of Android? Is this only Android? What about iOS? What about web clients? Um, is there a correlation between client geography and errors? Are the errors all due to timeouts or is there other classes of errors that are coming up? So while exemplars are a really great place to get your bearings, figure out your upstreams and downstreams, what a typical flow works like, you're still gonna wanna do aggregate trace analysis, digging into your events or logs, digging more into different metrics, but exemplars are this really beautiful entry point to your system. And really, I want folks to keep in mind that exemplars are a single representative. Of course, they cannot contain all of the answers for you, but I do contend they've got a great place as an entry point to your investigation. What I wanted to do today was to bring more awareness to exemplars. I would love to see Python Open Telemetry add those support in, and really just hope that you all start to use them in your daily workflows in see how it can improve that first experience from page to getting your bearings and what's going on. If you are early in the tracing journey or need to teach folks about how to instrument traces, I've got a open source workshop here that is all in Python, covers auto instrumentation, programmatic, manual, and um, instrumenting Prometheus exemplars. 
for the more advanced folks who are saying, oh my gosh, I came because I wanted to hear how to do prom versus OTEL, OTEL versus prom metrics, I recommend starting with the open metric spec, pretty short, very readable, and then digging into the OTEL compatibility with prom and open metrics um, docs page. It is very, very detailed and it will give you the information that you need. And with that, I thank you very, very much. You can find me on the web everywhere, pager duty with an I. And um, yeah, here's my attributions and credits for images. Thank you so much.